just going to install this Fluid Master float valve for the toilet um, at a different house this time but the toilet is uh, allowing water to come into the system all the time or the valve is so I'm going to replace it with this one it's a, a quiet version so it'll stop the dripping as well if you uh, hear it filling up and it's a bit of a thin funny design but it works fairly well um, you can see it was seven pounds half price for some reason but that was a number of years ago now so it needs a bit of assembly so there's your main stem incoming water stem of course you've got the it's a plastic fitting as you can see there you go washer in there that comes with it so that will be unscrewed that'll be unscrewed uh, when you get to install it quick little float very simple and you can adjust it up and down using this thread here so that's how you adjust the water level here's the incoming pipe the incoming water supply pipe and as you can see this is your quiet system where it just allows the water to come down through this plastic pipe that's all it is it's just an open plastic tube so that you don't hear it fill up um, so that just clips on it's all clip on stuff you don't need any screws or anything for this so that clips onto the top and there you go that's, that goes in there you can see it just clipped around there and uh, you've got the arm this is the kind of supply and um, off arm so it's, it allows water to coming in so it allows water to come in or stops the water flow when the float closes and you can see it's got a rubber stopper there and by a vacuum system what that does is that actually presses on that tiny pinprick hole there can you see that just in the middle and that shuts off the supply and then lastly and a little bit more confusingly you've got these little pieces that come with it as well and you're supposed to install these in the bottom that's the filter so that is supposed to filter any large debris in your pipe and then you're supposed to choose between either high or low pressure uh, restrictors they call them now I've no idea what our water pressure here is in this house but um, so you kind of got a bit of a guess really and um, their literature what does it say it says below one bar no restrictor and then you've got um, between one of four low restriction now I don't know which one that is out of those two because the picture if you look the picture there of the two restrictors that one and that one look the same I assume this is the low restrictor allowing more water to come in through the thread and that is the high restrictor because it makes the water go through more turns um, and there we go so over four bar high pressure restrictor but no idea what the pressure is here I've got no way of testing I don't think many people at home would do to be honest so yeah so you've got to put it together so I'm going to choose hmm, what am I going to choose I'm going to choose low um, between one and four bar which I think should in theory be the normal pressures and what you have to do so it goes like that you have to clip this bottom piece into there kind of just fits together like a little jigsaw so I'm going to do that and then what you'll do is you'll insert that into the tube there so as you can see these pieces they've got little cutouts and they literally just go together like that and then if you push them together it should form one piece there we go so that's the, the system built and then what you do is you shove that up there so that goes up uh, push it up as far as you need to I don't know how far it's supposed to go it doesn't say but um, yeah once you've pushed that in then we can build the next bit I mean it does mention that to remove it for cleaning which I don't think anyone really does do they on a regular basis who knows um, you just remove the valve with pliers yeah using pliers so yeah I guess you push that in and then just leave this little bit sticking out so you can get it again next bit let's assemble uh, this bit on the top here and all that does 
is that just, as you can see, that presses onto there like so. So that just goes into there. Uh, you do need to work out where you're going to have that. Um, so ours is going to be located in that way. And then we want this spout to be facing us. So we actually want it like that. So let's put that on like so. So I'm just going to push that into place. As you can see, these should, these jaws should snap into place. Yeah, that's it, believe it or not. So there we go. You can see the jaws have gone over the tabs. And that's all you need. I suppose all it does is direct the flow up here. Doesn't matter if a bit seeps down here. Next piece. Where's our arm? There it is. And you need to get this up the right way as well. And then what you do is you take your arm and that slots into here. So we'll just look at that. You can see this piece here, this little arm is facing up and that goes in to those little slots. You can see the, the actual pin there on either side goes into those slots, one on this side and of course one on that side. Push it into place and it should click. Right, there we go. And then as you can see now, when it's filling, it's like that. And when it's filled completely and the float pushes up, it will just close and block off that valve. Using uh, that tiny pinhole, it can actually just stop the flow using a kind of a suction method. Stops the air being allowed to come in and then uh, that closes it off. And then finally, this little screw thread, and all that does, as you can see, that will screw down through that hole on the arm. So it goes down through there. So you have to give that a bit of a wiggle and, and push that in. Um, it's got a little stopper at the top, so you can't go in from the bottom, but it does mean you can't lose it and unscrew it by accident. So yeah, it's going to have to be a case of pushing that in. Right, so I think the easiest way is to make a start by putting it in the bottom like that and then you can quickly push it in and then there you should be able to see that's gone in now so the two jaws are on this side and the other jaw is on that side. And that allows you to effectively unscrew or screw it up to adjust the height so that's what you can do with that. So that is it built. So I want the flow to come in with having the water supply incoming facing me and the float's going to be to the left. So there should be plenty of room for that. Uh, that's on the top and then of course remember put that in as well. Shove that in the bottom. I know I've already taken it out because I wanted to uh, just double check everything. So that's it built. Push that in. Install time. By the way, these don't click together. They just, there's just a press fit. The jaws just press together. So uh, it allows you to pull it out, but it, it's easy to remove, I guess. So that's all that does. And I've just noticed, very tiny writing. It actually has, will that focus? LP on there, low pressure. So it does list that. And then on here, I'm presuming, and uh, there we go. HP, high pressure. So yeah, the high pressure ones, the thinner threads, so that if you've got a lot of water coming through, you're forcing it to slow down by going through the spiral. So there we go, choose whichever you need. So we're gonna go for low pressure between one and four bar. By the way, I just wanted to mention, I'm not sure if this was just due to transport, but this is slightly beveled at the bottom, as you can see, so it's flat on the top but bevel down here. So that would make more sense that when you sit that into the bottom of the system and then place that on top, this is gonna fill the hole better than if you were to have it that way. Otherwise, that's just not gonna seat properly. So I'm gonna go that way in. So the flat surface mates with this flat surface and any imperfections in the system itself uh, will be taken by, by that. So that's how I'm gonna do it. And then of course the nut goes at the bottom, that way up. So this piece here touches the bottom of the tank system.
another little note uh, this seems to come to a stop at that position so you can only push it in so far and then that's kind of that's as far as it goes so yeah that is designed to stick out a little bit and it won't matter of course because that's going into the water pipe by the way you can't swivel this here at all so once it's in position um, it's either correct or you're gonna have to snap it off gently and then turn it around so it's the other way but um, so that's why it's good to get that one in the right position first so that when you install it you don't have to take it out and move it around again because I guess over time the more times you do that you might end up weakening that plastic and snapping those little jaws okay so here's our toilet apparently it's dripping can't hear it but there we go and luckily we've got a little isolation valve there so this makes it nice and easy just to turn off the water to the system, but you don't have to turn off water to any other part of the house. So you could just work here to your heart's content. And if we look in here, so this is the old system. So you can see that's why I wanted the bag and the uh, input there. And um, yeah, the little float's gonna go in here. You'll need to make sure it will fit in here between this section, the uh, main flush section, and here. So sometimes it can be a bit tight. You may have to move the whole assembly a little bit just to fit that in. And same for here as well, of course, because this is the old-fashioned lever type system. So um, yeah, a little bit tight for, for room in here, but I'm hoping that this will sort it. So next stage will be turning off the water at the isolation flush this as many times as I can get, get the water out of here by sponge, etc. And then, um, of course, the nut is there. And that's a plastic one as well. So, I mean, you can get metal ones of these. I could have uh, got a metal one, but I had this one spare, so I thought I'd just use the, the same plastic. So as you can see, that is plastic as well. But you don't need to go crazy tight on these. So there's no compression fitting. It's all done on the washer. Right, let's get that done. Now it's weird because this has been reported as dripping, but hmm, looks okay to me. I mean, there is water there, but uh, okay. There's a lot of water left in there. That's going to take me a little time to bail out. Oh joy. So as you can see, we've got most of the water out and that's why you want to get the water out because see all those bits at the bottom? It's all bits of lime scale, I guess. Maybe some of those toilet blocks that go in. But thankfully, as you can see, the input and output are actually slightly raised. So you don't need to completely empty it. But when you remove this, just make sure you give that hole a good clean because you don't want any bits in there which could possibly foul the washer causing it to leak we get some good light in there again it's a bit better so there's a step as you can see there pipe time next got a nice big spanner wang it on there remember it's lefty loosey righty tighty that was quite loose, but if you need to when you're undoing it, hold this as well to stop it spinning, because you don't want that spinning when you're turning your nut. But I think that's it. Yeah, remember it's not super tight this, it's, it's copper and plastic. So you don't want to be rounding that off, otherwise it's back to the shop again. Oh, also, don't forget of course, once you've done that one, there is the flat plastic one, let's get my lights. So of course you've got the plastic one as well, just there. So you need to get your spanner on that one as well, of course. So that's the one to do first. Or second, doesn't really matter. Then unscrew that one and then you can take the valve up and out of the cistern. So that's gonna be nice to grab that one, isn't it? Have a go. For difficult jobs or hard to reach jobs, sometimes it's nice to have these jaws you can adjust them as you can see you can slide that pin up 
up and down to adjust. So that's probably going to go on that plastic one to get that off. Anyway, now you've got the thing. Now you've got the valve loose. And you can see, um, let's just hold that. Unscrew the plastic nut. And this should be able to come straight out. There we go, lovely job. And there we go, look, you can see all the lime scale built up on here. And yeah, there's that washer. There's your hole, that needs a good clean up because you don't want to be putting your washer, your new washer down on all those bits. And underneath, let's retrieve that plastic one. So now we can assemble the new one. Okay, so just do a little test fit. So there we go, there's the hole. Taking the nut off, everything's in place. That's gonna go down into there. And as you can see, this is where you need to be planning ahead. Just to make sure you've got things the right way around, because you wouldn't want you wouldn't want your valve going that way. So you'd have to remove that and put it back. Same with the float. You want to make sure that's the right way around. Make sure you've got some space. A little tight here, so just need to make sure everything's all uh, lined up. Doesn't matter too much on this plastic bag. That's just going to sort itself out. There we go. Let's put it in. Right there we go. So that's how it's going to be. So as you can see, when the float's down, it's not touching on anything. And there's the movement you get. Um, so yeah, there we go. That's, if I just put it down from here, that seems to fit in quite nicely, I think. That bag will just be taken down like that. Just notice there's a piece that's down here, which I should have removed with the old. Right, there we go. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Happy with that, so I'm gonna just basically screw it back in now and then water on, test for leaks and adjust the flow, uh, not flow, adjust the height of the water. Mm, don't know, you want it sort of, don't know, maybe down here. The inch or two off the top. And yet yeah, before final assembly, just make sure your hole is clean because you want a clean hole before that goes in and tightens down. And sometimes you do have a flexi here, just maybe uh, between the copper and this valve here. But luckily, as you can see when this is in situ, that matches well. Um, I think I would have preferred it a bit higher, but I think once we screw up, that's going to go over there okay. So um, yeah, I think that's going to be all right. This copper pipe is on clips, as you can see, so there's not a lot of up or down movement for that. But I think it's going to be okay. Um, I believe this was the same um, thread length as the old one, so just be mindful there. Might need a tiny bit of adjustment. As you can see here, yeah, they're the same length, so they should go in okay. So I shouldn't get any issues with meeting the copper onto here because it's the same length. So when it's copper pipe time, as you can see, I've tightened that one at the top there, plastic one. And when it's copper pipe time, mate it up, turn it backwards, so loosey a little bit until you hear a click, if you can. Yeah, so you're not cross threading it, and then you can wind up by hand. And then it really is just a very tiny nip with those again you're going on to plastic so just a little bit you can always monitor for leaks a little bit and tighten if you need to but it's best to go not completely round tight on plastic and then that should be a case of switching back on again okay water fill time 
There you go, the bag's filled up nicely. Um, <laughs> I say nicely, no, it's got a bit caught there, so let's just open that up a bit. There we go, that's quite a nice silent fill. And then it's just um, adjusting the level, isn't it? So while we're down here, I want to check for any leaks. Looking all right. Like I say, the washer will do fine under here. And then it's just here. If I think that's not damaged, that should all be good. Yeah, nice and dry. So it's filling up. So you can see the water there is going into the bag, into that tube, that plastic tube. That's what makes it nice and silent for filling up, especially when you need to use it during the middle of the night. Yeah, so once that switch is off, it should be a case then of just making sure the level's adjusted. I've got that. Where well, have I got the float? Near the top, actually, you can see. So, just twiddle that a little bit. But now the waiting game. And there we go, job's done. So I think that's pretty much where it was. So, well below the overflow. New piece of hardware in there. All looking pretty good. So, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful.